Good morning. Welcome to worship at Eden United Church in Mississauga, Ontario on this second Sunday of Easter, April the 11th, 2021. The season of Easter lasts for seven weeks from Easter Sunday through to Pentecost. My name is Reverend Jan McCormick. I am the Supply Minister here at Eden. Welcome to all members of Eden United Church congregation, and welcome to those from far and near who are joining us for worship today. It is a pleasure and a privilege to worship together. For thousands of years, Indigenous peoples have journeyed on this land. A relationship with the land is at the center of Indigenous peoples' lives and spirituality. We are gathered on the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe, the Haudenosaunee, the Huron-Wendat, and the Mississaugas of the Credit, and we acknowledge these people's stewardship of the land throughout the ages. Acknowledging the territory where we gather and the peoples who have traditionally called it home over thousands of years helps us to live out the United Church's apology to the First Nations of North America. But words are easy. Action is more difficult. We are called to live the apology we speak. The acknowledgement supports our calls to ourselves and to others to pay respect to Indigenous peoples. It is one way that we and the Church can work towards right relations and move towards becoming the community that God calls us to be together. There is power in the gathered fellowship of believers. Early Christians trusted this power so completely that they shared everything in common. Thomas solidified his faith when he experienced Jesus' presence with him and with his fellow disciples. As a church, we need to believe in the presence of Christ within us and among us in order to be able to do the work of the church in the world. Let us quiet our hearts and minds for worship as we light the Christ candle. Today is the second Sunday of Easter, two Sundays in which we have celebrated the Hallelujahs of Resurrection and New Life. We light the Christ candle. knowing that it is Christ who draws us together. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, even with a stubborn wick. As you follow um, the home worship outline that was emailed to you, as usual, the words that are printed in bold are for all of us to say together. Let us join our voices in the call to worship. This is the day to walk in the light. This is the day to share signs of peace. This is the day to believe, though we have not seen. This is the day to embrace what we cannot touch. Come, let us worship the Lord of life. And we continue with our opening prayer. Please pray with me. We turn to you, O God, our minds filled with fresh memories of the miracle of resurrection. Alleluia! Christ is risen. We are eager to learn about Jesus' new way of life, made possible through the miracle of resurrection. Alleluia! Christ is risen. 
Fill our hearts, our minds, our lives, we pray, with the miracle of your resurrection. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Amen. This day of resurrection joy reminds us what is true, that Christ is raised and Christ is Lord, and we have work to do. Christ's reign has surely come to earth and caught us by surprise. And we who know that wondrous truth are called to live new lives, are called to live new lives. One day when the disciples met, afraid behind locked doors, the Lord appeared. Last week, we celebrated Easter and the promise of new life with Jesus. While there is so much to celebrate in the Easter season, we can often feel like Thomas and be filled with doubt about our faith and life. When we are doubtful, we often find ourselves asking questions. What questions about faith and life do you carry with you? Often, our doubts can feel overwhelming and begin to weigh us down. But what happens if we turn our doubts around? We can see that the questions we have turn into a J, they can lead us to Jesus. If we give our doubts and our questions to Jesus, Jesus can help us navigate our doubts. We can give our doubts to Jesus in prayer. Jesus, help calm our fears and our doubts. Be with us as we walk in our faith journey. Help us to know that you are with us and that we are not alone. Amen.
Prayer for Elimination. Let us pray. God of revelation and promise, open us to your word and will this day. Open us to your ways and inspire us to follow you wherever our journey takes us. Amen. Our first reading from the New Testament is Acts 4, verses 32 to 35. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possession, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as then he had need. Our second reading of the Gospel is John 20, verses 19 to 31. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. May God bless this reading of the Holy Word to our insight and our understanding. Thanks be to God.
Loving God, I pray that if there are words that are not in my text, that you will put them in my mouth. And if there are words that are not in my mouth, but people need to hear, that you will put them in their hearts. Amen. Like Thomas, we long to see for ourselves. We long for some definitive proof that Jesus is alive. <clears throat> and present in our lives. How can we be sure? Easter doesn't end on Easter Sunday. Actually, in the church, we observe the season of Easter between Easter Sunday and Pentecost. And during that period of seven weeks, our focus is on the resurrection of Jesus and what it means to us. In order to examine what the resurrection means to us and to our faith, we must first ask ourselves, do I believe in the resurrection? Easter is full of surprises. Jesus' followers observed the Sabbath, and on Easter Sunday, early in the morning, several women went to the tomb at first light to prepare Jesus' body according to the Jewish tradition. The stone had been rolled away. Jesus was not there. How is that possible? From that moment on, Jesus appeared to his followers in different places and at different times. To Mary Magdalene, he appeared as the gardener. To the two disciples on the road to Emmaus, he was a knowledgeable stranger who joined them on their journey. To, in John's Gospel, 
Jesus appeared to his followers in the upper room. Twice. How are these visits or appearances possible? Jesus' followers had witnessed his arrest, trial, and crucifixion. Two days later, they were in shock and in hiding. What would they do now? Would the Romans search them out and kill them as well? Locked away, they huddled and tried to determine what was next. Mary had told them that she had met Jesus in the garden, but they weren't sure that they believed her. Peter ran a foot race to the tomb with another disciple, and he saw that the tomb was empty. Certainly, they had reported their experiences to the others, but no one knew quite what to make of it. And then, suddenly, Jesus appeared in their midst. No fanfare, no trumpets or angels. He simply, quietly appeared. Peace be with you, Jesus said. This is the traditional Sabbath greeting. Jesus showed them his wounds and repeated for a second time, Peace be with you. And then Jesus put his followers to work. As the Father has sent me, so I send you, he said. He breathed on them, just as God breathed on Adam at creation. Receive the Holy Spirit. And then the next step. The Holy Spirit, through the Holy Spirit, Jesus' followers were given the power to for forgive sins. And at that moment, they became apostles. A disciple is defined as a student or a follower. An apostle is an emissary, an envoy, a messenger. Apostle means one who is sent out to convey a specific message or perform a specific task. Jesus was putting his followers to work. He was, in effect, telling them, get out of this room and get busy. But Thomas was not there. This has always puzzled me. If Jesus' followers were too frightened to step out of the locked room, where could Thomas be? When Thomas returned, the others told him about Jesus coming into the room, but Thomas was skeptical. Unless I see the marks on his hands for myself, I won't believe, he said. We can relate to that, can't we? We are all searching for some proof of Jesus' presence. People can tell us about Jesus, and we can choose to believe or to disbelieve. But when we have had a personal experience of Jesus present in our lives, we are convinced. We are changed. We are transformed. Poor Thomas, he has been defined by this statement in John's Gospel. He went on to work tirelessly as Christ's messenger, and he is credited with bringing Christianity across Asia Minor to India. But all of his evangelism has been overshadowed throughout history by his doubt. The others also doubted, but that seems to have been glossed over. This story has been interpreted by many to suggest that it is not good to doubt. But I suggest to you that doubt is a very good thing. When we ask questions, we search for an answer. Not a formulaic answer. Not someone else's answer. But our answer our own answer. Someone famously said, quote, beware of a person who thinks they have the answers.
end quote. Faith is not static. It is not a static ideal. Faith changes and grows as we ourselves mature and grow through our experiences of life. Thomas received his own answer. Eight days after his first appearance, Jesus returned to the upper room. Jesus knew that Thomas was there, and he came specifically to answer Thomas's question. Peace be with you, Jesus said. Thomas had said that unless he could place his fingers into Jesus' wounds, he would not believe that the visitor was, in fact, Jesus. So Jesus invited Thomas to do just that. Put your finger here, he said. This was proof enough for Thomas, and he declared his belief. Jesus' response? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. This sentence has often been interpreted as a reprimand for Thomas, but in my view, that is not the case. For me, it's an invitation. It's also an inspiration. Jesus was sending his apostles out to be his messengers, and they would be transforming the lives of people who would not see the human Jesus as they had done. In the passage from the book of Acts, the early Christians are described as unified. They were a community of one heart and soul. In the early years of Christianity, the number of people joining the faith grew quickly. People from many different nation nationalities and faiths converted to Christianity because they were impressed by the way that Christians cared for one another. This was not a bureaucratic form of unity. It was a unity of values, of purpose, and of mission. When the Roman Catholic Church was formed a few hundred years later, the monastic communities were founded on this model of communal life. The Bible has a balanced view of wealth. In our consumer-based world, the problem of wealth is a spiritual one. Our focus on wealth and possessions easily takes our minds off God and the needs of others, and thereby weakens our faith. The early Christians reorganized the economic structure of the community. There are two themes that stand out in the passage from Acts. One, unity in the midst of diversity. And two, generosity in the midst of poverty. Christians took care of one another. Even those who might have been f foes in the past, those who owned land and houses, sold what they owned, and shared the proceeds with the community. There was not a needy person among them. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. The resurrection is not an isolated event. The resurrection has the power to transform the lives of those who believe. The disciples of Jesus were hiding in fear, and Jesus came to them. He offered them peace. He tried to jolt them out of their fear. Jesus breathed on them and sent them out to work. But a week later, they hadn't moved. They were still hiding in that upper room. Jesus came again. On the surface, it seemed that he was there to reassure Thomas. But in reality, he came back for all 
of his scared and confused disciples. Jesus offered himself over and over again to people who longed to see him. He gave the gift of his presence and his peace. Receive the Holy Spirit, Jesus said as he breathed on them. The Greek word receive can also be translated as take and eat. This is the word, these are the words of Jesus for us as we receive communion. As we take and eat at communion, we become the spirit-led body of Christ in the world. How can we see Jesus 2,000, more than 2,000 years after he died? In moments of peace, in every act of kindness and love which one person extends to another. In new life, be that spring flowers, a newborn infant, or a new beginning after a difficult struggle. And perhaps in a surprise. Serene Jones wrote in Feasting on the Word, quote, God comes seeking us, stepping through the walls that hardship and struggle build around us, offering love at the very moment that grace seems nothing but a farcical ghost story. End quote. The Christian church is in transition, not only because of the challenges of COVID-19 and its variants, but also because the society in which we live has become increasingly secular. How can Eden United Church serve the needs of this community? The power of the resurrection is upon us. Jesus sends us out just as he sent his disciples a few days after his crucifixion. Are we ready to go? Amen. Jesus, stand among us in your risen power. Let this time of worship be a hallowed hour. Breathe the Holy Spirit into every heart. Bid the fears and souls. worshiping virtually, the cost of maintaining the church and its programs does not change. Thank you to everyone who continues to donate through PAR or e-transfer or by delivering your check to the drop box outside the church office. If none of those options will work for you, perhaps you would like to mail a check to Eden United Church. You will find the correct mailing address on the Eden website. The first Christian communities were one in heart and mind, sharing everything in common, that no one would be in need. Let us be one in heart and mind as we share what we have with those in need in our community and our world. Let us pray the offering prayer together. God of abundant grace, we live in a world where a person's worth is often tied to their wealth. 
You have shown us how good and pleasing it is to share our abund abundance with others. May the offerings we bring to you now be a sign of our commitment to help those in need and to live together as the family of God. Amen. We continue our prayers with prayers for ourselves and for one another as we pray the pastoral prayer together. Gracious God, in the twilight just before dawn, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb. She, so also do we seek life in shadowed places within us and in our world. You offer us your abundant grace, and yet we often choose the shadows and settle for selfish pursuits. Forgive us, we pray. Help us to believe where we have not seen. Help us to walk bravely in the midst of our fear. Help us to see miracles. You know us so very well, Jesus. You know our doubts and our questions, and you love us enough to welcome such doubts and questions. You know our fractures and divisions, and you love us enough to invite us to forgive one another and live in unity. Thank you for loving us and for inviting us on the journey of love. Help us to embrace this journey that we may walk in the light. Let us find the living Christ within our hearts and in the world that we may truly know your peace. God of love, we pray for those whom we know and those whom we do not know who are in need of your healing touch. We pray for those whose lives are burdened by loss or heartache, for those who are struggling with illness or pain, all those who are carrying hidden sorrows. We pray that you will grant strength and healing. We pray for all members of the Eden family of faith, our families, friends, neighbors, and co-workers. We pray in particular this day for everyone named on the list of requests for prayers that has been circulated. Holy One, as COVID-19 case numbers rise once again across Canada and in other parts of the world, we pray for everyone who is ill with the virus or its variants. We pray for medical professionals who are caring for those who are ill. We pray for everyone associated with Eden Daycare who has been infected with COVID-19. Trusting that you have received all our prayers, spoken and unspoken, with mercy and grace, we pray in the name of Christ within us and among us, who taught his followers to pray this way. doubts, take your fears, take your uncertainties, wear them with confidence in the knowledge that God 
understands. Be open to hearing God speak directly to you in life. Allow God to warm your hearts and open your minds. For your faith is in your questions. May the Christ who walks on wounded feet walk with you on the road. May the Christ who serves with wounded hands stretch out your hands to serve. May the Christ who loves with a wounded heart open your heart to love. May you see the face of Christ in everyone you meet. And may everyone you meet see the face of Christ in you. And everyone said together, Amen. Yeah.